Hi there, it's Dr. Syra, and welcome to Therapist Thursdays. Um, I want to talk to you today about a really fascinating concept. Um, it's technical, but it's also intuitive. So it's called the negativity bias. So with the negativity, I want to tell you three things about the negativity bias. First, what it is. Second, um, why it matters. And the third is what to do about it. So what it is. The negativity bias is this thing that happens in our brain and our consciousness where we pay attention to bad things more than we pay attention to good things. Now, our brain is kind of designed that way because it, for thousands and thousands of years, we've evolved to kind of scan for danger, right? So when we notice something bad or dangerous or threatening, we, we lock that in. When we notice something good, it's like it's a nice to have, but it doesn't actually impact our survival, right? And so we tend to, in our minds, magnify the things that are a threat and minimize the things that are just kind of nice to have. And so people often ask me like, why, why do I think so negatively? Like I'm always thinking about things that can go wrong. Well, you're actually kind of designed like that. It's called the negativity bias. And we're, we're likely to remember things that were, that were bad. So why is this important? Well, when I work with people in therapy and we go back over their, their life experience, often the things that will pop out are these these kind of big moments so whether they're big great moments or big awful moments and the reason they pop out is because those moments are charged with emotion now the way that memory works is that things that are emotional emotionally charged get locked in more deeply into our memory things that are just kind of neutral we don't really remember so there were probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of moments you had as a child just kind of like staring at the wall in your imagination floating, right? But you don't really remember those moments as much as you remember that big thing that happened like falling off your bike and getting your knee scratched or um, the time that you know you were bullied or whatever happened. You don't remember all those and the bullied thing might have happened once and the staring at the wall happened you know, hundreds and thousands of times but you don't really remember it. So that's important because it actually tells us something about how we tell ourselves the story of our life, right? And that's why looking at old pictures is a really good idea because people usually don't take pictures during the bad times. <laughs> they take pictures when things are going well. And so if you look through, you know, old, I mean, if you're my age or older, it'll be like photo albums, right? Um, physical photo albums. If you look through those pictures, you'll see the things that offset some of those negative memories that you have. How did, why does it matter today? Well, I'll give you an example of something that just happened to me yesterday. Okay. So I, um, I did a webinar and I called someone to like get their feedback, somebody I really respect. Um, and they said, Oh, it was great. And, and then they gave me a critique of something that I could have done differently. Now, all the 25 other people, or however many other people who sent me text messages and emails and said, wow, that was amazing, I really enjoyed that, blah, blah, blah. Well, I didn't really, those didn't really land as much as that one critical comment, right? And that's the negativity bias. So we actually have to try really hard to not get sucked in to that one critical comment. So that's why it matters because it helps explain why it affects us so deeply when somebody criticizes us or puts us down or when we think badly about ourselves. So now the third thing, what to do about it. You know what it is, you know why it matters. Now what do you do about it? Well, one of the things um, that's a really simple antidote to the negativity bias is gratitude, right? So if you can look at the things in your life that you appreciate, that you value, that you're kind of lucky to have, and list those down, actually make a practice of listing those down or speaking those out loud, uh, it, it can offset some of that negativity bias. The other thing I wanna tell you about that's connected to gratitude is something called the confirmation bias. And so the confirmation bias is this, when you believe something, you will find things that match your beliefs. I'm gonna say that again, when you believe something, you will notice things, you will find things that match your beliefs. So what that means is, if I believe people are generally friendly, 
then if somebody's unfriendly, I'll see that as a one-off thing. But I'll keep my belief that people are generally friendly, right? The opposite is also true. If I believe people are generally cruel, then even if people are being friendly to me, it won't land because I'll think of that as like just a one-off thing that, oh, this one person's nice, but generally people suck, right? And so one of the things we do in therapy is we look at, um, we work with that confirmation bias. We work with moving people's thought processes because what they believe to be true is what they will notice. They'll actually miss the things that don't match their perceptions. And that's why, you know, when we're doing work around um, racism and stereotyping discrimination, we actually have to change people's like deep held beliefs about groups of other groups of people. So what we can do about it is start to look, really look at what are our own belief systems about the world and about ourselves. And if we can start challenging some of those belief systems, then we can use confirmation bias to our favor, right? We can actually start noticing more of the good that's happening, um, which also kind of counterbalances that impulse to see the bad. So those are my thoughts. A little bit technical today. I wanted to get you into some psychology terms, but I thought that would be helpful as we're going through these these times, right, where things can be difficult. We might feel like we're in survival mode. We might notice the bad. Um, and so this is really the time to start looking at, okay, what, do I, what beliefs do I need to really challenge so that I can um, not be so focused on the things that are difficult, but make room for things that are actually opportunities, places to grow right now. So those are my thoughts. Um, join us on Dragonfly Wellness TV to get more free mental health content. Join us on Saturdays if you're a woman um, with anxiety or depression for our online women's group. Um, right now I'm doing free check-in calls, 10 to 15 minutes during the COVID-19 crisis if you need just someone to talk to for a few minutes. And stay in touch. Let me know in the comments below what are some of the things that you've done um, around confirmation bias and negativity bias. How, how do you make sense of that? What are some examples that you could give from your own life? So take care and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Mm -hmm.